Hey, Campus Georgia. <laughs> yeah, I hate doing this stuff. You know what I do want to do? Make a mod to a knife. Let's check it out. We got done with the trailer. I had to replace my connector for the trailer to the truck. Rusty and whatnot. Got that chore out of the way. I hate working on vehicles. I'm not very good at it. Mary doesn't even supervise that well. But we came in here because, yeah, I got on... I need to do a mod on a knife thing. Looking at my notes and things and trying to decide what I want to do. My peasant, my Sford peasant knife, this guy here. I love these knives. So simple, such a easy knife to use, to keep, to maintain. The design is so simple. They just ask to be modified. <laughs> the handle is made of that polyurethane, I think it is. It is a comfortable handle. I just don't like plastic. I think a knife like this should have a wood handle. And as you know, if you haven't seen it, my mini, I replaced the uh, the handle on it and made a wood handle. I did some other things to it that not many people noticed. I'll show you now what I did. Here is the way the knife should look. Here is my mod. Can you see the difference? Besides the size, one is a mini and one isn't. Look at there versus there. I changed the pivot point. I just wanted to do that because I wanted it not just to be a, a different handle but to to look a little different it's kind of sleekish and it works the handle is comfortable there's no problem there everything works the way it should and i really enjoyed doing it it was a challenge i learned a lot uh things like i need more tools <laughs> and that's another thing i don't want to do modifications with all these fancy tools that you can get today the hand powered stuff and that I like doing old school stuff because it's a challenge. You have to, to learn how to deal with stuff when you don't have everything at your hand. And I just enjoy that sort of thing. I did woodworking at school. I really enjoyed it. And I've learned things over time. Okay, over a long time. <laughs> and I like to use hand tools. And I actually went out and bought some more t hand tools, uh, non-powered. Because I want to do this sort of stuff projects like this by hand because i just think it's a, a more fun way of doing it and i, and I get when i'm done and i look at it i, I feel better I, I feel like yeah look at that you know i just enjoy that sort of thing so and you can see my hands suffer for it <laughs> so back to this guy i've decided i want to mod this guy and the mod would be obviously about all you can do with this is change the handle when I say change the handle, you look at the mods that people have done on them. They've all gone to wood handles. I want to, do, I want to basically do the same thing. And I was looking at what handle can I put on there. Now, as you know, I'm an Opinel fan. I was thinking, I've seen so many mods on Opinels. And I, I was thinking, oh, I need to look at that. So one of the comments that I had on one of my videos, the guy said, you need to look at a number nine. Because I have eights. All my opinals are eights. I thought, okay, let me have a look. I think it's like a dollar more. That much bigger, there's quite a difference. When I say a difference, here it is here. It's an opinal. There you go. This is my oldest opinal, the carbon bladed one. It's well used. You know, it's, it has that natural patina that happens over time. I've used and abused this. It was an everyday carry for work for me for a long time. It's the same thing. It's just bigger. That's all. And I, I grabbed it and I thought, wow, look at that. This is a step up. Would this be an EDC for me? No. This would be a great camp knife or whittling knife or something like that. I don't own a puku, I think is a clinic. This type of knife. So I got this guy because I was wondering if I could get rid of the handle and use the opinal blade to make me a puku knife. So that's another project I think I want to work on. One thing about an opinal is look at the handle. Look at the shape of the handle. About as basic as you can get. 
And I got to tell you, one of the most comfortable handles you can find. That's one of the things about an Opinol is the handle. Here we go. We need to make us a simple, basic, comfortable handle for this guy. And I want to make it like an Opinol. I don't know if it's going to work. And that's what I got to look at. Now, obviously, the first thing when you look at it, this handle is two sided. You have two separate sides. An Opinol is one piece of wood. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want to put this on or anything like that. I wanted to keep it as a friction folder because that's what this is. This Ford to make it Opinolish handle. Now, it's not going to be this handle. I'm going to start from scratch with my own wood and it'll probably be walnut because that's what I have in the shed right now. I've got to do some fiddling to see if it's actually going to work. Mary's in my Smith & Wesson box again looking to see what's in there. That's what I'm going to do now. So I made, I, what I did was I just outlined, yeah, you can see there, I just made an outline of the nine and this four. Nine is almost the same length. As, obviously, we don't have that curve. It's going to be straighter. So I want to make a handle based on the Arpinol to fit on my sword. That's the plan. Let's have at it. So here you can see I've, uh, I've taken the, the Ford knife apart. It's just two screws and uh, male and female which hold it together. Very basic. They use these as standoffs to give you the gap between the two uh, handles. And you've got your stop here which controls the position of when you open and close the knife. This would be in there and when you close it this stops the knife allegedly from hitting that. Now on the mini as well it actually touched. So I have a little bit of an issue with that and that's not uncommon. So and then of course when you open it it opens on there and that holds the blade in place and your hand holds here. I want to do the same thing but shape it like the opener like I said. I was wondering if it's going to fit in the size of this number nine. And here you can have the, you can see I have the nine open so it would be like this and fold around and come in there. So I'm probably looking at right there. Just like that. Can you you see what I'm saying? It's actually sitting right in there and it would swing around like that. So I'm going to have to go with two pieces of wood, but I don't want to do that. I want to keep it the same way. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, draw an opinal and mark out where the holes need to be and everything and the pin and the size that I want on it. And I'll make two blanks, wood blanks on the side, thick enough to be rounded off like this. So that's where I'm I am right now. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to head over to the workshop. We'll do some cutting, chopping and whatnot. So I'm in the shed. <clears throat> and this is the wood I want to use. Um, this is walnut. And as you can see, it has the white on the outside and it's brown on the inside. I want to use the white. So I'm going to have to cut off and then cut down this way so that I just have the white. So I'm going to do that now. Like I said, I use hand tools. <laughs> Two reasons. I prefer that. I just, for me, I, it's more fun. The other reason is I have no power in the shed. It's have at it. So yeah, you can see I've cut down the wood. It's going to mean a lot of work getting rid of the excess wood, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough wood and I'm losing my voice.
smaller piece now to work with and I've got to just trim this down as well but when we get closer we'll do that now the next one This will be the template that I'm going to use for the handle and it's, it'll change slightly but this is basically it. I had to do some measurements and everything and I'll show you that right now. I got a piece of, this is just some plastic. I took the handle, put it down, measured roughly the shape. I took the original scale put it on here to make sure that it's where I, sh I should be. I didn't have to worry about this hole because it doesn't hold anything. The only issue I had to have was where I put the, the hole when the blade wraps around, is it going to hit that? Like that. Now, when the blade is open, I need it to sit so that this piece is sticking out slightly. It kind of follows the edge of the handle at the top, but this must stick out. I wanted that to stick out and there's a reason for that. So now I have the correct position for open. If I close it, that means that the pin, this guy, that stops it from going any further, goes there. When I close it, it's going to hit that pin. Is it going to hit the blade? Okay, it's going to stop right, right there. You can see I'm not going to hit the pin. There's quite a distance between there. Plus the tip is under the handle, which is kind of important. You don't want that to be sticking out. So now I have my template. I can draw this out on my blocks of wood that I've prepped here. Draw the template out and then drill the holes and start shaping it. I have a lot of wood to take off. I wasn't paying attention and I measured the total thickness for each piece. They should be about half as thick. So I'll have to trim those down as well. But I won't bore you with that. We'll get them tripped down, get it all marked out, and then we will start shaping them scales, and hopefully it will work. So here you can see I've trimmed the wood down. Uh, they're both kind of close to each other. Uh, one's a little bit thicker. You know when it'll all even out when we make the handle. I drilled the hole here on the markings for where the pivot is and then bolted it together and drilled the other hole for the other uh, screw to go into there. I'll put that in and then we're going to start shaping. Once we close to where we are we'll put it together and see how we do it. It's a long process when you don't have power tools and you do it the old way but I prefer it that way so I'll just show you the highlights
So as you saw, I, I kept working at it. I came in this morning and we're a little bit closer to where we want to be, probably at the point where I'm going to start rounding things off and start to really shape it. But before I do that, I want to put the blade in and make sure that, you know, everything lines up. I did uh, remember to smooth these out. I'm sure you saw me do that so that they sit flush you know, maybe put a liner in there. But I'm I'm not sure if I want to do that. One of the reasons is, is there's quite a gap between the screws and I'm not sure the liners will sit right. And I wanted this to stick out a little bit more like that that's when it's open to close it the tip needs to be under there so and I've got plenty of room between this and the, the, the tip of the blade so now I need to start shaping it I need the opinal shape you've got the belly and the thin at the end here and then the thicker belly towards the front and if you can see that so that's what we're going to aim for and hopefully it'll work the other thing i want to do is i'm thinking instead of putting liners here the problem i have is that this gap here i don't want to squeeze the wood in like that so i think once i have this figure out what this depth is for the blade to put a pin back there I'm gonna put them back together again and start working the roundness of the of the handle <laughs> So I've got the basic roughed out shape. Now I'm done with the heavy stuff, like the rasp. Now I'm gonna start with some heavy sandpaper and starting to get it in the shape that I want. Okay, so I've got it cleaned up and, and almost rounded. I'm getting a little nervous about the blade being in there, so I want to check the fit again. Um, and you can kind of see the shape. It's still a little rough, needs cleaning up, and a little bit more heavy sandpaper. But I was worried about the shape and how the blade will fit in there in the closed position. What do you think? You think it's working? Huh? It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. It's not food, though. <sighs> okay, so I took a coffee break, and while I was having coffee, I went over uh, with the rough sandpaper, and you can see it, and I cleaned it up so that most of the rough stuff is gone. Now I want to fit the blade. Once I have that all done, then I'll be cleaning it up with some uh, smooth sandpaper and I'm going to be putting some boiled linseed oil on here. So I was putting together and I thought I'd better look at what way I want to go. Do you want to go silver or brass? So there's the stainless I'll try. I think the brass, the brass looks nice, but I think the stainless matches everything up because of the blade. I kind of like that. And it's a peasant knife. They wouldn't have any 
fancy work on it, except maybe, you know, some patterns on you or basic patterns. But I think I'm going to go with the stainless. The problem is all my stainless are too long. So it looks like another trip to Ace Hardware. And then we should be ready to clean everything up, put it all together, put those pins in and all that good stuff, and uh, we'll be done. Okay, so I went uh, back to the hardware store and I found some silver. And I, I think I, I like that. The silver and the blade, it's a good match. The peasant knife is for peasants and, and they're not going to have fancy bronze or anything like that on it. They, they'll keep it pretty plain or, and maybe do something with the handle. Now the exciting bit. We've got to get those pins mounted on the inside so that when you pivot it around, it's not going to hit there. And when it's open, this will be open as well, sticking out. The blade with the pins, that I need to be at least about there. You see that? It is used stop when you open, it stops the handle in the right position. And when you close, it stops the handle in the right position. The tip below the wood like that, but away from the pin. So I'm just going to sharpen my pencil here with my opinal. <laughs> And I want to mark that position. Put the little V there. Now I want to spin it around and that's where the blade stop would stop because the pin is going to be right there. I've got to a point where I need to drill a really small, not really small, but a small hole for a pin to fit in it. You know, I have, I have a, a, a hand drill, this guy here. And it's a, it's a great hand tool. It was a garage sale find, and it does the job, and it works great for me. The problem is, is on the chuck here, it's kind of iffy. On bigger drill bits, it's no problem. It, it works great. But when you get to them little drill bits, this doesn't hack it. So I had to try and find another drill. I was looking for just one of those hand drills, precision hand drills that you have a little handle on. You just, I was looking for an old school one, maybe one I could, you know, fix up, clean it up and can't find them. So I went online and I found one that had pretty good reviews. Probably. Okay, so I've got my handy dandy little hand tool here and I drilled a hole right in there. Now the blade. Now and let's see how we did. And there's the pin there and it comes around and looks pretty good right there it spins around and stops oh that's close look at that <laughs> we'll give it a try So there we have it stop there and it swings around and stops. It actually worked. So there we have it there and it'll swing around, sorry, to there and then swings around and it stops before the pin. The tip is not sticking out. So now what I have to do is like I said, I don't like not having the gap here, so I need to put a pin in there as well, which I'll do. I have to make a pin, I've got a little screw, I'll cut it off to the same length and we'll put it all together. Made it back. <laughs> I have uh I did all the stuff that I needed to do, cleaned it up with some uh, fine sandpaper. I tried again. I had the same problem I had before when I did this guy. I had problems countersinking. 
the wood chipped. Well, lo and behold, right there and right there. So I stopped because I thought it would chip really bad. So uh, I just stopped there. I cleaned it up. I thought about filling the chips. In, in my mind, this is a peasant knife. It shouldn't be perfect. It should be a handmade, cheap, inexpensive knife. That was the reason I didn't go with the brass. Um, I did, like I said, I would do. And if you look carefully in there, there is a standoff right there. There's the pin going through. And that's the standoff. Kind of a similar thing that you would have where you stop the blade in the position you want. And kind of what I was looking for, the, the belly thing. I like a belly, like I said, Oppenol, they're really good at it. They, they've really got this down to a fine art, but it's still, it's still okay. It, it fits perfectly. So that worked out. I kind of did the Oppenol ending piece here. So although it's not truly an Oppenol, it's Oppenol inspired. And I got me some uh, linseed oil. Going to put that on now and let it soak in and then basically we be done. Oh, and one other thing and I'll show you that uh, after the linseed oil. Okay, it's an unusual handle. <laughs> what can I say? But it, it works. Can't put enough linseed oil on. Uh, soak it as much as you can. Get put it, put a bunch on. Do it a couple of times. Uh, the first time you do it, put a lot on and let it soak in, and then do it again until it doesn't soak in anymore, and then you're good for a while. Anyway, you should be coming back to do it. So there we got the oil on it. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with the light. While I have the linseed oil out, you know, I oiled this guy a couple of weeks ago. It's time to put some more on and just give it another coat. Trying to be efficient here. <laughs> so there, I gave that guy a good soaking. By the way, this wood and this wood are from the same piece, actually. Remember that piece I showed you where I cut it? cut this from that came from the same very same piece gonna set these two guys here drink some more coffee okay it's been sitting here for about i don't know an hour and you can see it, it sucked up all that uh linseed oil uh the reason is is that this piece of wood that i used has been sitting in the shed through a whole winter which means it dried out quite a lot it lost a lot of moisture and uh, so of course when the oil came in it just went right in there so here you can see it here and you know I, I love these peasant knives I like doing this stuff though nice and simple fairly straight forward Struggled a bit, you know, like I said, I struggle with this here. And, and I did see a, you know, somebody mentioned on, on the last one, on the little sword that I did, that you, you don't need to have the screwy things. And instead of struggling like that with them, just drill a hole and get those, pin, you know, put a pin through and, you know, you, you tap the end of the pin and it folds over and seals it. But, you know, hey, got to use some hand tools and old woodworking stuff. And that's always a good time. I, I love using that stuff. I, I grew up with it. Tell you about this now. I saw, I saw a video where a guy was doing mods. And what he did was he tied a piece of, I can't remember what it was. It might have been 550 around you so that when you open it, you put your third finger through the loop and hold it like that. And what it does is it give, makes the knife even more stable. And I think I want to do that, but I think my 550 might be too thick. Yeah, it's, I can't get it in. It's, so there you are. There it is here.
my peasant knife with a wood handle upgrade. Opinal inspired. <laughs> you know, I've just put the oil on. It's kind of swelling a bit, so it's a little tighter than when I initially had it, but it'll it'll come loose again. And you can see it there. You know, not perfect again. I'm pretty happy with it. You know, any time I play with these, you know, with a bunch of wood and do some filing and drilling and sandpapering and shaping, and it's always a good time for me. And it worked out. For me, I, I kind of like it. I think it's pretty cool. Peasant knife. Total time of actually working on the handle, putting it all together and everything, two days. I would say two eight-hour days, 16, 17 hours to do this. This would make a good camp knife, I think. I think I, going to the boundary waters, I think I might take this. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. You know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back. Like I said, I've got projects I'm thinking about. Got some knives to show you. Uh, the weather's still not quite ready here. The wind is like 20 to 30 miles an hour out there, so fly fishing's out of the question. I'm, I'm ready to do that. Got my kayak ready, camping, and like I said, next month, boundary waters with the usual suspects. You will be safe out there, especially with them sharp and shinies. Even the ones you think you did a good job on are now, now safe. <laughs> Just saying. There you go. Thanks for watching. Wait, found something. An old shoelace. So I tied it on. Can you see there? Yeah, it's an old shoelace. It's a peasant knife. So what you would do is you would put your, your third finger through. Like that. And then when you grab the knife, even if you let it, you know, if you don't hold it properly, you can't, the knife can't close because the strength in your finger, look at that, gives it extra strength and support. Brilliant. That guy deserves a medal for that one. When you close it up, put it in your pocket, it's an easy pull out. See you again soon.